So if we want to, we could play another one. Like... Tiebreaker between Orph and Clone. Looks like we have a tiebreaker between Orph, Orphelius and Clone. For third place to figure out who gets the 25 kudos and who gets none. That is going to be the case. So yeah, that is how it works. Like I said, the Buchholz tiebreak is pretty simple. Although it's not showing up for some reason, but yeah, it's basically you get the score of top bottom, top and bottom gone, and then whoever you fought against, like all the scores of the people you fought against, but with the highest and lowest scores removed, so Old Ghost Stalker, because they fought Orphelius, and they are second, and also Lowry and Jasper, they end up with two. But also on a basic tiebreak score, they won against Orphelius already, so yeah. We're going to have Clone and Orphelius. This is unusual. Normally the third place tiebreaker happens, the bronze match happens bef after the last one. But this time it's not. This time it's going to be between. So, Clone, Orphelius. On whatever. I don't know. Clone versus Aphelius. Wait, is this an Isis Delta? Yes, this is on Isis Delta. Okay, this is going to be a bit weird. Normally we don't see maps on Isis Delta. But apparently that's exactly what's happening. Oh. Alright. So, Isis Delta. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Didn't realize I was actually still playing the game. I thought the music on intermission. Okay. <sighs> Damn it. Maybe we should go to Engine 98. Alright, let's try this again. So let's get into the game. We have Clone and Orphelius, and is this okay? I can't really tell if it's centered or not because the weird the way this map has the terrain go. So Clone starting in the sorry Orphelius in the yeah west side of the map. Clone in the east side of the map. Orphelius having some crashing issues. Or you, know, you can just rejoin. I'm not sure what Orphelius is doing. Anyway, so yeah, this is going to be a little bit weird because we have seen Clone and Orphelius play before, and Clone and Orphelius. I think Clone is kind of the favorite on this one. No, Clone hasn't gone against Orphelius, actually. Clone went against Vermind. And Clone was Vermind, Alphabot, and Lowry, and lost against Lowry. Of course, Lowry now the winner, so it's just. Third place, so I need to get the kudism now, I'm not sure. Okay, Orphelius is back. And we can begin. Wonderful. Just starting up again. So this is probably gonna be fairly short, I'm guessing. Isis Delta is a weird map. Back to the game. So yeah, Isis Delta, a bit of a weird map. It's, as you can see, not symmetric. You can see more easily up here. Not symmetric, also the metal extractor spots are weird in terms of their size. <laughs> Basically 1 to 1.5 overall. It's like 1, 1.25, 1.5. Like mostly in the corners, 1.5. I don't know if there's really any rhyme or reason to the positions. This map is usually not played. And where Aphelius starting out with probably... 
Now, Ophelia's... Clone is starting out with the Amphib Factory. He wants to use the water that's outside. Just go for that instead. While Orphelius wants to... Let me reset the winds. That was an exit, not an actual win. Orphelius is going for Hovercraft. Which is rather surprising given the fact that this map is actually not the most conducive to Hovercraft. I mean, when you think about it... I'll show you the pathing map here. Like... The water's fairly pathable, but... Going up hills like this, that's not impossible, but really slow. And around the hills, it's just, it's going to be very slow for Orphelius' units to get around. Though yes, the water will be of no consequence. It will not stop them whatsoever. While the Amphibs, on the other hand, they're just not going to care at all, because this is, this is bot country. You can just walk around everywhere, wherever the heck they want. Also, really bright. But anyway. This is bot country, and... Clone just building up the entire southeast side of the map. There's nothing is going to stop Clone here. Right, they've just got everything going. A couple of metal extractors already, a couple of conches. Going for a lot of ducks, and that one mace is up. Pushing forward. Orphelia is not sure what they're planning on doing. Looks like they're trying to go for a bit of a rush, moving their commander forward. Possibly trying to see if they can get the north side completely. They have some radar up here to try to figure out what's there. Which, given the map and the way it's laid out, this is a great place for radar, actually. This is a wonderful place, because from here... They'd be able to see most of what's going on. Like, Yeah, as you can see, they basically see the entire north side of the map. And nothing blocks them. Not the top, though. I don't think they can see up top. Well, they can. Yeah, actually, they can, they can see up top here. So that's perfect. And now the daggers do find Clone, and the mace follows shortly after. Orphelius shouldn't, wants to not lose these daggers. And, oh, what? Orphelius, why are they moving the daggers forward? That is not the way they want to go. But hey, that's fine, because the mace is going to be able to deal enough damage, I think. Although that duck... Ooh, that duck. But that duck doesn't matter. Clone's commander is in a really tight spot, and this is early enough in the game that it definitely makes a difference. That mace, if it can kill the commander... Oh, those ducks, and... Yes, it kills the commander! Well done, Orphelius, you killed that commander. Clone loses that commander, and actually that mace stays alive. Good choice in the mace rush. That's working out really well. Oh yeah, pro solar body block. Worked nicely, but yeah, that works... Worst metal spot? Yeah, if one, it's one. But yeah, that mace... Which is still alive, by the way. 97 health. Needs to go back for repairs. But overall, though, that's actually worked out nicely. So at this point, Clone still is ahead by metal. And the mace went down, rather unfortunately, still ahead by metal. Orphelius needs to continue to build up metal extractors. They look like they're trying to reclaim a bunch for energy. Not really the resource they need a lot of right now. But getting more and more of these daggers in here, as long as the daggers can deal damage without dying... I think the dagger ball needs to be built up, but these ducks are going to stop the daggers very quickly. Another mace might do the trick, but I don't know if there's time. Orphelius is really losing their window. It's closing rapidly. It might have already closed. This area has been built up, and there's not a whole lot of easy places to harass Clone right now. This spot right here, I suppose, but anywhere on the water is going to have a bunch of ducks under it. And those ducks can torpedo out the hovers. And it's going to do nothing. So these, these daggers need to be careful. They need to build a ball. They need to rush in. Let's see, what ball do they need? So, daggers deal 110 damage, while ducks have 230 health. Yes, they still have 230. No, they have 340. Oh, right, they deal 230 damage. That's what it is. So, it takes about four daggers altogether to one-shot a duck. These daggers go into the south. Clone doesn't actually have radar. Orphelius does, and does know about the ducks coming in here, but Clone does not. So, these... These daggers going the right way. They should be able to actually spot these, although it's going to be hard to say. Are they going to spot them? Can they see above the... No, they can't see above the cliffs. But the reverse is... Not quite the same. So Orphelius does manage to see... Well, does manage to get in. Sneaks in. Needs to avoid those ducks, though. Really important thing. And going exactly the right way. Orphelius going up this ramp. Although, unfortunately, that's only almost... Almost exactly the right way. The ducks are going to be faster up there. They... Yeah, those... That's not going to work out as well as I'm sure they'd like. Nice! Nice moving around, though. It is avoiding the ducks, and now getting getting to critical mass, there are four daggers, and like I said, four daggers do one-shot ducks. So actually, all the ducks going down, and Orphelius takes out all of the ducks. They have time now to go up here. They can successfully, in time, get up this ridge, get on here, and destroy everything. I don't know if they're going to do so. It looks like they're going to try to attack from below, but they can't spot it out. In fact, can they even get up here? I don't think they can. No, it's red. It's not purple. They can. In theory. 
Not totally sure, though. Oops. Yeah, it looks like they can slowly crawl up there and not going to try. Just going to keep up with the ball and go north. Take care of everything down here and probably try to get something else in a different factory. Or just destroy the factory entirely. Just get rid of Clone's factory. Right now, Orphelius has gotten a massive, massive advantage. Take out the conch. Good idea. Take out the remaining ducks. Also a good idea. Like, just take it everything they can. Really, the ducks underwater are nowhere near as powerful as they are on land against daggers. And that's it. That's game. Orphelius takes third place. So Orphelius has taken third place. I can't easily adjust the scores in the bracket itself to reflect this. But it is the case. It is the truth. Orphelius has third place. Clone has fourth. And now we have sorted everything out. Although I kind of wish I could update this. Yeah. And Orphelius has actually counted as third anyway, so it, that worked out. That was just, that was arbitrary though. The fact that this counts it as third. But hey. Well done to Orphelius for getting third place. Successfully getting third place. That was, that was tense, but it worked. Good choice of rush. So that is the tournament. That is it. That is the entire tournament. Thank you for... Thank you for watching. Because that... Yeah, that's it. Good night, everyone. Okay, let's try a better sign-off. Thank you all for watching, everybody. Have a good night. There we go. That was a much better sign-off.